actor and stand-up comedian, and you know him as Elliot Goss in the hit show, Search Party. Take a look. So, what did you have in mind? Well, I think it's safe to say we would prefer a boy, um, a, a gay baby boy. Or even queer, a queer baby. And of course, we are very open to all ethnicities, of course. And religions. <laughs> but it would be ideal if they were 5'11 at the shortest so that they could carry us up the stairs to bed when we're very elderly. And one blue eye and one brown eye, maybe. Like husky. Oh, but it would also be good if he could make us feel protected, like a dad, mm -hmm. like a son that feels like a dad. to speak with you. You have so many layers to you. Um, one thing that I really appreciated that you talked about was like early in comedy, mm -hmm. how you were trying to find yourself. How did you come around and find your style? Well, I think I was like really, um, I was really scared of being confessional or something at first. Like uh -huh. I felt like that was like too normy. And so I was like the first couple years of doing stand up, I was like really like weird. <laughs> and like I would like get up on stage and like jump into a character with like no introduction and I, it, and then I was like this is so like hostile and alienating like what are you doing and then eventually you know and then I and then I I started being a little more like straightforward and direct. Did you find that eventually, when it's personal, is when it works the best? You know I would say there are no hard and fast rules, but for me that was true. That's yeah. been my truth. Yeah. I feel like I even posed that question rhetorically, which isn't fair. <laughs> like, yeah, it felt unfair. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, no matter what we do, as long as it's uh, some form of our truth, our heart, our life experience, then it can be spun into anything. Yeah, totally. But it's got some core of personal. Yeah, I think but that's true. Okay, so now that you've tackled who you are on stand-up stages, yes. and who you are in childhood and adulthood, search party comes along. Yeah. And it becomes this absolute phenomenon. I, I hope that's true. Sometimes it feels like no one's watching it. I can tell you, this is what everybody loves. And it's uh, a show that's evolved and grown. I mean, people really love it. Peop the people who love it. That's sweet. I know you're lying. I know you're lying. Um, no, they, they, the people who love it, love it. It has a real cult following. And that is like, sometimes when I feel like no one's watching it, I'm also like, but everything I've ever loved took like 10 years for people to appreciate, you know? So that's, that's what I, you know, think about as I go to sleep tonight. I think you know it's appreciated with the fact that it also like, now in the business, a great marker of success is where a big place will come and pick up your show from another place and give totally. it a second life. Yeah, it's really true. No one was really watching us and then we moved to HBO Max and had a bunch It was on TBS bigger... and now it's like coming to a close when yeah. it's like the most talked about, the most successful, the most prominent, you're swan songing. How does that <laughs> feel? Um, it's, you know, I don't know. It's, it's a very like the show itself is very kind of unsentimental, which is what I love about it. It has like it's really like rude and it has like teeth, you know. I love when you say that it has teeth. I mean, it does. we just talked to Melanie Linsky. It has fangs. And Yellow Jackets has teeth. Absolutely. That's what people, I think that's what people want. And I feel like people are ready for teeth again. They're ready for like, teeth. Like it just cycles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you read the room or maybe you try to be greedy and fit it all into one thing, or maybe you fluctuate from teeth to sweet. Yes. But we vacillate as human beings. We are not one thing. Yes. And people love Search Party for that very reason. Totally. It also changed and grew and was bold and tried all these things that, you know, that is a testament, I think, for other shows to follow. Yeah. To say, don't stay in a flight pattern. Totally. I mean, it has this like real, like it does have like a really crazy scope. It goes to wild places. And then what I do appreciate about it though is that the characters kind of always kind of stay the same, like in a classic TV comedy way. Okay, the first episode like gave me like these weird feelings because I grew up in Los Angeles in those exact neighborhoods with those exact hipsters. Yeah, yeah. I have been at those parties, like yeah, everyone at in those the show. Brunches. Yeah, brunches. Yeah. By the way, it's like Portlandia. Brunch is like the Saturday night club <laughs> of the now. You know, we used to go to discotheques and now we go to brunch. But I want to go back. I want to go back to disco. Me too. <laughs> Dancing I dance. is important. It really is. 
Now you are a big Tony Collette fan. You like have a president fan club, like a whole thing with her. Well, I'm sure she's so sick of me talking about this on TV. She's probably so scared of me at this point. But yeah, when I was when I was like 10, 11, I I saw the movie Clock Watchers, and then I saw Muriel's Wedding, and I was like, oh, my, I, I I was. I was it, just in the way that you can be as an adolescent, just like so full body obsessed, you know? And I started a website for her. <laughs> I mean, it was I, like a full time job. I gotta tell you, yeah. I know Tony. Yeah. She is hilarious. I bet you she loves this. Who wouldn't love this? I know, I mean, she's been very gracious with me when the times where I've like forced her to, you know, like Engage. listen to me talk about it. And, um, but I'm, she's, she's been very, very sweet. She's a spitfire. Yeah. She's so cool. And yeah. she is one of the greatest actresses to have ever lived, period. Yeah. Muriel's wedding. From Muriel's wedding to The Sixth, the Sixth Sense, Sense to In Her Shoes is one of my oh favorite my God. performances. Now Knives Out. The yeah. woman can do no wrong, and she is a hoot and a blast. And yeah. in fact, I heard you have a birthday coming up. Oh, I do. Hmm, interesting. Well. We wanted to get you something for your Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. And we have it here right what now. What is it? Oh my God, wow. It's none other no. than Tony Collette. Um, it's a Tony Collette birthday cake. Do I just stick my hand in? What do I do? I mean, I would motorboat it's it so myself. <laughs> Go right in there. Out of respect to Tony, I won't motorboat it, but this is so beautiful. I thank you so much. <laughs> How does Tony taste? Oh, she tastes incredible. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you, Tony, I love you so much, and you are worthy of fandom, fan yes. clubs, yes. love letters, all of it. I think you picked so well. Thank and you I so much. I had honored. taste. I really had you taste. You really do. Not many 10 year olds were doing Tony Collette websites. Um, I hear you're meeting with uh, Mitzi Bananamore later. <laughs> it's so crazy because you know I'm a comedian and like she was obviously such a huge influence for me coming up in the scene. And like I just, I'm, I'm just so honored. I can't wait to meet her.